So Mark Robinson is a GOP gubernatorial candidate in North Carolina. And honestly, I had never heard of this dude before until this week because Mark has found himself in some hot water and even his own colleagues are choosing to step away from him because of it. What did Mark Robinson say or what did he do that is causing issue within his own party? Now he is denying that he referred to himself as a black Nazi, but is he correct? Let's get into this clip here from NBC News. Holy smokes, I never thought I'd see this. Let's take it to North Carolina with some breaking news tonight out of one of the most critical battlegrounds in this election year. What kind of feels like a political earthquake with the controversial Republican candidate for governor there denying a new CNN report he called himself a black Nazi and backed reinstating slavery. We're talking about Mark Robinson. Right now, he is the state's lieutenant governor, and he is no stranger to controversy in the past, like with alleged Holocaust denial. He's backed policies like calling to arrest transgender women who use women's bathrooms. But this new report on CNN says Robinson posted for years on a porn site's message board, referring to himself as a perv and a black Nazi, and allegedly... When you run for office, ladies and gentlemen, your pass is open sesame right so like when you run for political office they are going to by they i mean the media uh and of course your opposing party they are going to pick apart your past and i'm surprised that he doesn't he didn't think about that like i'm surprised he didn't think about that when he decided to run for office like what were you thinking what were you thinking ay 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 fetishizing transgender people saying he enjoyed watching pornography with him again robinson is denying it all in the video that he put out right before this report dropped. Watch this. Our opponents are desperate to sit, shift the focus here from the substantive issues and focus on what you are concerned with to salacious tra tabloid trash. Dasha Burns is joining us now. So Dasha, walk us through some of these allegations here, how they fit into uh, what else Robinson has said in his campaign and how CNN uh, sort of put the pieces on this together, they say. Yeah, Hallie, there is a lot to parse through here. So yeah. these were made between 2008 and 2012 on a website called Nude Africa, which is a pornographic website. You talked about some of the positions that Robinson has held throughout this campaign. He's made a, uh, has a history of making anti-transgender remarks, but one of the things he talked about on this website was that he uh, enjoyed watching transgender pornography and referred to himself as a, quote, perv. Um, he also said he didn't care if a celebrity had an abortion saying, quote, I don't care. I just want to see the sex tape again. This is someone who has called for a very, very strict abortion ban. Ah, so let's go back because I just want you to see the screenshots here. So he's denying all of this, by the way, he's denying it, but they do have screenshots. <laughs> God. Oh, Jesus. This is bad. They have his name here. They have, or his username that he used. They have the quote here where he said, slavery is not bad. Some people needed to be slaves. I wish they would bring sla it slavery back. I would certainly buy a few. Uh, so what we have here is a candidate that is obviously his personal lifestyle does not fit his political platform. So while he may be campaigning against people that are transgender or the LGBTQ community, uh, he may be campaign campaigning for uh, conservative values, uh, which would not be in favor of, you know, like porn, for, for example. In reality and behind closed doors, it's the opposite. It's the exact opposite. So it turns out, according to the information that they gathered, that he really did, I guess, was interested in people that were part of the LGBTQ community, although he's campaigning in a different way. Uh, and then also the slavery comment is is ridiculous. It's absurd. He referred to himself as a, as a black Nazi. So here's the thing. This just goes to show you how politicians when they are campaigning, those are just campaign promises, right? It doesn't mean that's who they are or what they really believe as a person. Now, some of them do, 
but some of them don't. Some of them just run on issues that they feel are going to be popular with their constituency. And in practice, they'll do something that's different. They'll do the exact opposite. And we've seen this happen before, right? Like, what do we call it? The preachers in the pulpit? the preachers who get up on the pulpit every Sunday and they preach and tell you what you're not supposed to do, but behind closed doors, they're doing those things. The same preachers that tell you that adultery is bad, but they got other women on the side from their wife. You know, so we have seen this, this happen before. And if I would imagine, if anything, I would think that Mark Robinson is probably very much embarrassed. Uh, and you're going to hear from some of his, uh, some of his buddies from the GOP who are also not too happy with this. Let's continue. Jesus. I just want to see the sex tape again. This is someone who has called for a very, very strict abortion ban. And when it comes to slavery, he wrote, quote, slavery is not bad. Some people need to be slaves. I wish they would bring it back. I would certainly buy a few. That is just some of the top lines in this really pretty shocking report, Hallie. There, there is this. It Let me pause here, too, and I'll just chime in and say for people who may be confused, why would a black guy say something like that? Well, honey, we got Uncle Tom's in, in every, uh, every, every group. And <laughs> the reality is like, I live, so he's North Carolina. I lived in North Carolina. I went to high school in North Carolina. And yes, there are some black people who share those same views as Mark Robinson does. It's really weird. It's like, it's almost like they're they're trying their hardest to fit into the, the 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 population that is around them, or they're trying to kind of fit in where where they may not belong, but this is where they're at, and it's it's really weird. And so it's like they will repeat like racist like rhetoric that they're here from from white people about black people and they'll repeat that or go along with it just to try to fit in with uh, that group. It's very odd, but it, it does happen. So when I heard this story, I said to myself, like, yeah, I've seen this before. I've seen this before and I've seen it in North Carolina and I've seen it in South Carolina. And so I've seen these kind of things where it's like depending on where you may live and the people that are around you, particularly, especially if you grow up in an area that is that way, and maybe you're one or, or two or three black people there, and that's what you hear. It's almost like, instead of pushing back against that, you will adapt that mentality yourself so that there's less heat on you. But Mark is all over the place. Lost in, Mark has lost his damn mind. Let's continue. We have to talk about the midnight deadline in North Carolina, the timing of this. 11.59 p.m., right? So a minute before deadline for uh, essentially the lieutenant governor, if he were to drop out of the race, to do that, in fact, and be replaced. He has been clear, right? He's not dropping out, Dasha? That's exactly right. He's saying he's staying in the race, but no doubt pressure is building. I just got a text from the NAACP saying they're calling on him to drop out. And this is a problem for uh, former President Trump, for his campaign, for Republicans, uh, given the ammunition that this now gives to the Harris campaign. This is somebody that the former president has given a, a full-throated endorsement to that all, basically every other Republican uh, has supported as well. So this becomes really a, a political nightmare for or yep. for the Republican Party right now. And the Harris. Yeah, it's a bad, this is a bad thing. And then we'll get into the other clip and I'll show you why as well. Because when it comes to people voting down ballot, you know, Mark Robinson is still in this race. And uh, typically uh, the candidates that are down ballot may not affect the presidential candidate. And I remember people doing this in 2020 where they voted for Republican uh, local candidates like governor, mayor, et cetera, but they voted for Joe Biden for the presidency. So typically he may not hurt Donald Trump in, in a sense, uh, but other Republican politicians are coming out to speak against Mark Robinson and they're pretty notable ones. And I think that's something that's uh, going to continue to hurt Mark Robinson. And I am really surprised he hasn't dropped out at this point in time. And I don't even know if it's enough time for someone else to even step into that race uh, in his spot. But as you'll see here, when we go to the next clip, he did speak out about this. We're going to show both sides here. Um, he believes 
that he can continue this race, even though some of his staff has started to resign. So they're getting heat for this too. So staff members are like, yo, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, I am out. So listen to this. A defiant Mark Robinson is back on the campaign trail despite an exodus of his top aides. The controversial Republican nominee for North Carolina governor is holding events just a day after several key campaign officials stepped down. Uh, here's what he said uh, just a short time ago. We're here for small business people. We're here for all those parents out there that are losing their children to fentanyl. We're here for all those people out there that are struggling to keep their small businesses open. We're here for the people who are, we're here for the people who are struggling to get their children a decent education. We're not here to talk about 15 or 20 year old salacious false lies. They don't want to talk about what's going on right now. They want to talk about what possibly happened 15 years ago. But that's what happens when you run for office and every it happens to every politician. It's happening to Kamala Harris uh, this time and it happened to her in 2020. Remember Tulsi Gabbard brought up her past. Uh, it's happened to Joe Biden. It's happened to you know Barack Obama. It's happened to Donald Trump. It, it happens to every politician. And people may not always remember everything that they've posted online, but I would imagine you will remember that. <laughs> I would imagine you would remember that one right there, Mark. The staff resignations follow a CNN investigation that unearthed graphic and inflammatory comments Robinson made several years ago on a porn website. He denies uh, making those posts. And CNN's Diane Gallagher joins me from Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Uh, Diane, what else is Robinson saying this morning? You know, Jim, this is the first appearance by Robinson since the more than half a dozen senior campaign staff resigned this weekend. And about several of the 45 to 50 supporters who showed up here today in Wilkesboro said that's precisely what made them come. They wanted to show support for Robinson in what they describe as a very difficult time for him. Robinson didn't directly address those allegations beyond calling them uh, salacious lies from the past that may or may not have happened when he spoke to supporters. But he did address that and the campaign departures uh, when he spoke with press as soon as he finished the event. Take a listen. We, we, we have full confidence that we can go on. We're getting resumes from all over. We're getting offers from all over. People are jumping in to help us. We've made a ton of friends in this thing since we've been in. A lot of talented people right now are reaching out to us, and we're in right in the process right now of forming a team that we know can still lead us to victory so we have full confidence in our ability to keep going but the timing of that them walking away from you right now the time the timing doesn't matter it's not it's not the timing it's how you react and we are ready to react and we're doing it right now we're getting it so he's in Wilkesboro. And for those who are not familiar with North Carolina, um, I can tell you, you know, there's parts of North Carolina where it's, you know, more developed and, and it's the city metro area. And then there's the rural parts and then there's the mountains. And so the thing about North Carolina is that you have the beach, the city, and you have the mountains and you have rural areas in between those. Right. So, and I can, you can also tell by his accent too, his accent's a little bit thicker than someone who may be from uh, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area, for example, uh, or even uh, Charlotte metropolitan area. And so the area where he's from is probably a little bit more, you know, they're, they're probably Donald Trump supporters in that area. Just, I'm telling you, I know North Carolina pretty well, and it's probably a little bit more uh, white, like in that area. And maybe that's where he heard some of this rhetoric. I, I don't know. All I know is this don't look good for Mark. Don't look good for Mark at all. Robinson, you've talked about the, the reporting being salacious lies, not true. Have you taken steps then to prove we, it's not you? We absolutely are. We absolutely are. We're, we're, we have, we're in talks right now, everything up to legal counsel to take CNN to task for what they have done to us. We are, we are going after them. Okay, we are going to go after them for what they've done. But we have five weeks left in this race, folks, and make no mistake about it. We are not going to let CNN throw us off of our mission. Our mission is to win this race. And quite frankly, I am dismayed about the fact, as I said before, think about how many people out there right now, right in this place where we are right now, who are hooked on fentanyl, who are hooked on, uh, on opioids, and how many will die tonight because of it? Think about what's going on on our border. 
think about what's going on on the yes. world stage. Yes. And this is what you this is what you uh, choose to focus on. You've got these news cameras, news reporters, pens, pencils, your microphones. This is what you're focused on. You're not focused on the things that we talked about standing up there about our economy. You're not focused on those things. I but that's how it is with every candidate, Mark. That's how it is. Uh, Joseph said, I know that area too. out of three major high schools. Only one had black people. Yeah. And I think, you know, some people who haven't been to North Carolina, they may not realize this, but the reality is once you get out away from the cities, once you get away from the metropolitan, the, the Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, the triangle area, once you get away from that Charlotte uh, metropolitan area, and you, you have all the rural towns in between, it's a very different demographic. It's very different. Uh, that being said, it's just, I, I'm listening to him right now and I understand there's only five weeks left, but I would make that a priority if it were me and I was accused of that, I would make it a priority to show them like, Hey, this is not true. I have proof that it's not, it's not true. You know, just that quickly to do. And it's also, it also doesn't look too good for him considering the fact that his own party members are going against him and wait till you see who they are. That's really interesting. I am. I'm going to remain focused on those things. And you better, you better understand, I am coming after full CNN full throttle. Yeah. But we have got to put the people first. So and in order to put the people maybe? first, in order to put the people first, we've got to concentrate on this campaign. Yeah. And that is exactly what we're going to do. That's exactly what we're going to do. Thank you. No, no more questions. No more questions. Hold on just a second. No more questions because you're from Greensboro. And in Greensboro now, Robinson may be talking about the fact that we're focusing on that. But I can tell you there are plenty of Republicans in North Carolina who are as well concerned about what the K-File investigation, as well as a significant staff departure means potentially for down ballot Republican candidates here in North Carolina, Jim. And look at the top of the ticket. Former President Donald Trump was in North Carolina. He was in Wilmington on Saturday. He did not invite Lieutenant Governor Robinson to appear with him on stage. Robinson had a small public event at a speedway instead in a different part of the state. Didn't even mention Robinson by name at that. And this is someone who we at one point called Martin Luther King Jr. on steroids. This is a person who had a speaking yep. position at the RNC earlier this summer. And so while he is trying to focus on the campaign, I will tell you that other Republicans here in the state of North Carolina are very concerned about that investigation as well as the campaign shakeup. So this is someone that Donald Trump did support before in the beginning, invited him to speak at the RNC uh, for 2024 as well. But Donald Trump was just in North Carolina. And now Donald was like, Mark, who? <laughs> Donald was like, I don't know you. If Mark walked up to Donald Trump tomorrow and be like, hey, hey, Trump, what's up, man? Thank you for the support. Uh, Trump will be like, get this guy out of here. I don't know this guy. Get this guy out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know him now. Now, others do still know him, but they don't want to support him anymore. And that includes Georgia Governor Brian Kemp. Now, this is coming from Simon Ataba. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp has just now pulled his endorsement of North Carolina gubernatorial hopeful Mark Robinson following the porn and anti Semitic allegations first reported by CNN. Again, they're accusing him as referring to himself as a black Nazi. Uh, also, I guess, flirting or entertaining some type of sexual activity with those that are part of the LGBTQ community, which is the opposite of what is a part of his platform. Uh, it just seems like this might be a totally different person. Now, people are asking, like, well, what can he do to prove that it's not him? Well, they had the account listed and everything. It's really easy to say to show people that's not my account. You know, but another thing about this stuff, too, is that when you log into uh, an account, any type of social media account, well, these devices have an IP address 
And they can always, you know, people have a way of getting these things. They can always trace it back to an IP address. So if he's telling the truth, he might want to make sure that that is not the case. So he could do that. But it's not just uh, Governor Brian Kemp. Lindsey Graham, and this is a big deal because Lindsey Graham is a senator, obviously, uh, has a somewhat pull in the Senate. Lindsey Graham calls reports of Mark Robinson's black Nazi post beyond unnerving. And it goes on to say here, uh, Jesus, if they're true, he's unfit to serve for office. If they're not true, he has the best lawsuit in the history of the country for libel. But Graham stopped short of calling for Robinson, who has denied claims by made by CNN. And it goes on to say here, um, uh, Donald Trump again referred to him as MLK on steroids uh, previously before all this went down. He said, I think what's going to happen here is that he deserves a chance to defend himself. He's claiming they were artificially created. So again, like, again, that's something you can prove with your IP address. Uh, Graham advised Robinson, who has a history of controversial and racist statements to hire me the best lawyer I could find. I'd sue the hell out of CNN because what they're saying about him is just unbelievable. So I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, but Lindsey Graham and him losing the endorsement uh, from Brian Kemp, Kemp, and then of course uh, Donald Trump choosing not to uh, acknowledge him anymore, and he was just in North Carolina, so that does not look good for Mark Robinson. So there's a, a lot happening there with the GOP. North Carolina is one of those races that is particularly tight for 2024 between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. Again, I don't think this would affect Donald Trump in North Carolina, but it could affect some of those other down ballot races that are happening there. So good Lord, I never thought I'd see this one. <laughs> I never thought I'd see this one. They said Mark Robinson called himself a black Nazi. So again, uh, something that he could easily prove, but I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Also, we'll have to wait and see if he does decide to sue CNN as well. What do you think, folks?